follow along today and learn some handy tricks and tips when creating isometric designs just like this one right here. Also of course, a very quick way on how to create an isometric grid, but hey, that's just the beginning, so let's get into today's tutorial. So I found some interesting architecture that I wanted to use as inspiration for this isometric design process, but crucially I'm not going to copy this design, I'm merely using it as inspiration. I've also gone ahead and made this square as a background using the freeform gradient tool. That can be found right here in the gradient menu. It's pretty easy to use and I'm sure most people out there already know how to do that. You just move around the nodes, double click them to change their colour and so on. Now I do prefer the freeform gradients for sure, and that's because they are way smoother and they have more depth to them. What say we get into the isometric realm and let's start by making an isometric grid. Now if you don't know how to make an isometric grid, it's actually pretty quick and pretty simple. You need to select the grid tool which can be found here if you hold down a click over the line segment tool. Double click your artboard and then we will use the values of 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels and 99 dividers for both sides. You may have to adjust the stroke weight so it's perfect for you and also don't worry I'm going to show you some really neat things with this grid later in today's tutorial. Next, double click the scale tool and then hit enter on your keyboard. It's absolutely crucial to use 100% for the horizontal values and then 86.62% for the vertical ones. The penultimate step for the grid is to shear the grid by 30 degrees and yours should look something like this. And finally guys, rotate it by minus 30 degrees. I guess you could also rotate it by 330 degrees. You then have your isometric grids, and once you position it in place, it's best to lock it down with command or control 2, and also name it grid in the layers panel. You will soon see that in today's tutorial, how important the layers panel is going to be, and that is if you want to be an organised designer who doesn't end up in a chaotic mess. Now press P for the pen tool, and you should notice how Illustrator snaps the pen to sections of your grid. We're going to draw in the first left section of the upstairs part of our house, and make sure to hold down shift for vertical lines, and then of course just simply follow the grid lines for the other parts. I sped this part up because nobody wants to sit through that. Now if you have an outline shape like me, press shift and x to toggle to a fill, and if you're not happy with parts of your design, simply press a for the direct selection tool, drag and click over the anchor points like so, and then move them carefully to change the size or just the shape of your design. Remember to keep things isometric by following your grid lines. Right, so press command or control C to copy it, and then command or control F to duplicate the shape. Now if I head over to the layers panel, we can see we have two of the same shape, and later you'll see me have multiple groups of objects all labelled in this panel and I suggest that you do the same with your objects as you go through the process, because it is going to be super important later. This top shape is going to be a gradient, and this is a process you will do many many times on this design. So make sure to watch carefully as I apply this gradient. Now you want one dark edge and then one light edge, but in the gradient window, the light edge should have a 0% opacity. You can press G on your keyboard to adjust the gradient like so. We're then going to add some grain to the shape via the drop down menu, and I suggest your design should be larger than 2000 pixels so the grain effects come out really well. And these are my settings and how my grain looks, but what we can do now is to play with the transparency settings to see what works and what doesn't for our design. And I will show you some settings later that are totally going to change the game when it comes to the effects on this isometric design. But for now, experiment with transparency blend modes and also lowering opacities. Now I've gone ahead and I've made two sides of my building, and I've grouped both shapes of each side in their own group with command or control G. And you can of course see that here in the layers panel. Remember to be organised folks, because this design is going to get busy. Now I'm going to add some 3D depth to this, and with a pen tool, you can press caps lock on your keyboard, and that will turn the pen icon into a crosshair. And I do find this effective when I'm working on this kind of design. 
Isometric designs like this one are all about following the grid and just drawing things out. The current 3D materials effects tools in Illustrator simply aren't advanced enough to make this kind of intricate design. Not yet anyway. And these grain effects look low resolution and poor quality because right now they are. And we're going to change that later, don't worry. But if you see something out of place, just press A for the direct selection tool, click once and then move it into place. So shift X to turn this into a filled shape and you can probably see where I'm heading with this. If I then group all of this right side together and head into the layers panel, I can move those paths below the original layers to tidy everything up. And clicking the blue dots in the layers panel selects an object directly and then we can do things to it like add gradients for example. Just as you saw me earlier, I duplicated this upward thin shape and now I'm adding a gradient to it before going ahead and adding that grain effect. Multiply is often the transparency mode that I use, but it really does depend on your design and the colors you're using. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same to the other side and then attach a roof slab simply by following the lines of my isometric grids. And there you have it so far, it's looking pretty good. And just like before, if I'm not happy with the shape of my design, I will just use a direct selection tool to drag and click anchor points before carefully moving them along the grid. Hold down shift and then click multiple anchor points at once. If I don't like it, then pressing command or control Z will move back a step and actually the anchor points will still be selected, which is really, really handy. And that means I don't need to reselect them. So yeah, that's pretty cool. This shape and my design it will change multiple times across this tutorial, but let's now start adding some glass and features. For the glass, I had one simple rectangle that follows the isometric path with a thin rectangle on the edge to make it 3D. Crucially, I could hide this ledge with command or control three, but later I do actually have the grids above all layers, which I did find most useful. I will copy and duplicate the glass pane and then rename it to light. Pressing A for the direct selection tool also means I can double click the corner and do this. And if you press P for the pen tool and then hold down the Alt Option key, you can adjust anchor points into curves like so. I want this shape to resemble light or reflection, but I also want it to be subtle. I'm going to add a gradient like I did before and have the light side with 0% opacity, but the darker side will be a light blue. You'll always find me pressing G for the gradient tool when working on gradients. It's just so intuitive and useful in my opinion. Now it doesn't look so bad and you will find that your design probably will change a lot throughout this process. I know mine will. It really feels like we're building a house here. So let's next lay down some wooden flooring. Why not? I have a base color that is behind the original layers and then these planks on top. Each one has a plank and then a gradient plank with a blend mode of soft light. Now you can work with the isometric grid above all layers. And like I said, later in the process, I actually do do that. But you can also do this instead of fiddling around with the layers panel. Select all of your design, then shift click areas like my group flooring, which will deselect them, and then bring everything else to the front. When things are grouped together, you might want to edit something in specific. So hold down a click on the direct selection tool and then grab the group selection tool. The clues in the name there, I think. This allows you to grab objects within groups and then edit them as you so please. We're making good progress here, but now what's about starting on the ground floor? Using the same methods of following the isometric grids, duplicating layers and turning them into grain gradients, I've made a supporting pillar below. This gives a good sense of the building having an overhang or a cantilever. Yeah, I just threw in some architectural terms right there. 
So I'm going to draw in the lower right side wall. And as I do that, watch how my pen tool path overlaps other objects. This helps because when we move it behind the other objects, we know for sure there won't be any small gaps between them that might show up later. And as before, I just select everything, shift click the new object, and then bring the rest to the front. It's a pretty quick and neat trick. And to make sure the color matches this side up, I'm gonna sample it from the above object with the eyedropper tool, which is I on my keyboard. Now you can always hide the gradient layer of the command or control three, and then reveal it again with shift command or control three. When making the grain gradients, be sure to think about where the light is likely to be coming from, and also where the shadows are going to be. This will help your design look more realistic. For the grain effect, you can always experiment with other textures that might provide different results for your design. And that also applies with the transparency modes and opacities. Just experiment and have some fun with your own process. So I've gone ahead and finished the base layer for this first floor and added a border of three squares on my isometric grid. And that goes around the entire design. Now you can really dive into the whole shadow and light thing, but sometimes it can detract away from the bold style of this design. You're also going to want to add up the base objects and then build up details and little parts of the design on top of them. And that will really finish things off. But moving forward, you can see how I now have the grid on top of all my layers and it's locked. I also have everything grouped and labeled and in order. And this is what I suggest you do as you move through your design. It makes things so much easier, trust me. But if you wanna hide the grid, you can just click the eye icon in the layers panel. Okay, I'm going to add a light on this black pillar, a light that is causing the yellow orangey glow that you can see in the water below. But before I do that, open up your raster effect settings. We should be working in 72 PPI, but when you change things to high 300 PPI, your design will take ages to load, but also it's going to look much better. I was using medium before in my workflow, which actually looks okay, but 300 PPI would be very, very crisp and clean. But just remember it's best to work in 72 PPI so your computer doesn't slow down. So for the lights, I will make a rectangle and round off the corners with the direct selection tool. Remember to keep everything in line with your grids. Now we can see the object has a blue dot next to it in the layers panel. And I want it to be above the black pillar, but below the stonework on the upper floor. So it's simply a case of moving it in the layers panel. After some resizing and jiggery pokery, I'm gonna change the color to a yellowy orange. Then duplicate it either in the layers panel or with your keyboard shortcuts that we've been using the entire tutorial. And this will be my glow layer. For this, I will need to add a Gaussian blur effect. And again, if your design is larger in size, then the performance will be better. Also, if you change your raster effect settings to something higher, mine is set to 300 right now as example. Now I want to duplicate the base again, and this time turn it into a white light. As before, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur, but this time let's play with the transparency blend modes for this one. Overlay is looking pretty decent on this one actually. And by the way, if you didn't know how I made the water, it's just a freeform gradient tool, similar to how we did the background. I've gone ahead and made these little lights that stand outside the house. They look pretty cool, I think. But here's how I did it. I started off with a rectangle and applied a grayscale gradient that has multiple different notes. This gives it a metallic look. 
Then press G for the gradient tool as usual and adjust things until you're good to go. Then press L for the ellipse tool and hold down the shift key to make a circle from the center. Fill this circle with a light color which will act as the base color for your light. And I did the old trick of duplicating the circle, turning it to white and then applying that Gaussian blur effect. Finally, I copied the base object one more time and added another Gaussian blur. But this one would be scaled larger and also a darker soft orange. Oh yeah, you can also use a direct selection tool to round the corners off. Then I had a simple oval shape with a Gaussian blur and transparency blend modes doubled up for the shadow. And that's pretty much how I made those lights. And finally, I put a circle over everything, right clicked and bam, made a clipper mask. This isometric design changed a lot over my process. And originally I did try using the 3D material tools that Illustrator comes with, with the new updates. But the truth is they're inferior when it comes to this. And it's actually impossible to make something like this with those tools. Drop a like if you enjoyed the process, let me know with a comment, and if you want to watch something else by me, just click a video on screen. And until next time, design your future today. Peace. Lay up in this bed all Saturday.